Lemon Amiga presents A Play Giant Video Review Sit back and enjoy the show Welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be reviewing Hero Quest, developed and published by Gremlin in 1991. You can see this game is produced in conjunction with Hasbro Bradley Limited, which was a board games company, and it was just as well because Hero Quest was a board game. semi-animated storyline where we get to read what's going on. Apparently Morcar is on the loose and we'll have to catch up to him and defeat him in this game. we get to choose our language and as English is the only one I know let's choose that one and then we get the menu which is my favorite unlabeled so I'll have to guess what all these items are supposed to do first one of course starts the game the second one chooses our characters and you can see more unlabeled things here so if we click on them we can see that we can do various things to various characters we can choose up to four in the game a barbarian a dwarf an elf and a wizard and we can also select those on or off with the first button we can also rename the guys with the second button and i'm not sure whether you can just type that in on the keyboard i think you have to do it the unwieldy way so we can enter a name and and then we can also choose the characters that we want to play in the game and give them some kind of name. Unfortunately, you can't give them any stats. Let's enter a name for this one. And since this is a small creature who runs around, I'm going to give him a name, Gimli. And now we can also choose on or off the other characters. But at the start, I like to only choose two characters to play the game, and I guess if you choose four, it means there's more turns per character, which means, in theory, the game takes even longer. If you only have one character, then you have instant returns, and you can wander around the map fairly freely. You can see we can heal the characters in between the games. If we take any damage per level, we can also load and save at this point as well, and format a disc if we really want to do that. So, 
with all those options fully understood, we'll march into the first maze with two characters. Hopefully, the Barbarian and the Dwarf. You can see we have zero gold available to spend all of our cash in that shop. And so, pretty interesting icon from the Dwarf. And I wouldn't like to say what his face is trying to explore to me. But you can see absolutely no point being in that shop whatsoever. And then the last one is for an expansion disc. If you have the expansion, like I have on the WHD load, it will then load up the expansion, i.e. the rest of the quest, into the memory. And this is the maze choose option. The maze is the first level of the game, and it's pretty unobvious because you would think that the top card is the first one, but it ends with this level, Return to Barak Tor. Now that I'm supposed to have found the Spirit Blade, I can return to Barak Tor. And Barak Tor is, in this game, an important level because we get steps, which means we can exit this level anytime we choose, simply by walking down those steps. In each room, we'll get a number of icons, unlabeled, of course, and so we can find out what all of those do. You search, but I haven't found anything. And so let's check our pockets. There's nothing in there at the moment because this is a brand new game. And if you want extra armor and weapons, you'll find those here, as well as other items that might be important. Yes, you can see those to the one side. They are not ignited in green, so we've not got them. So all we can do is hopefully click on the arrow to get rid of that and to carry on with this quest. Now we can check out the map. There's nothing revealed at the moment, but that's what that one does. And we can't do anything until we've rolled that dice again. And it's a coin. It gives us up to maybe 11, 12 turns. And I'm not quite sure what the maximum is. Maybe we'll see that in this guide. And all we can do is click forward on the level. And that will move the guy around. We can also attack things if there's anything to attack. There's nothing to attack at the moment. That will give us, again, the map. And also we can... Well, let's put the icons on there. We can also search for various places. We've got our pockets and the map. And we can also skip on to the next turn by clicking on the shield with the arrow next to it. You can see various things on the top of the screen as well. Stamina and mine points. I think those can only be replenished between games by clicking on the character in the third icon in the character selection menu. You can then heal everybody and it's a good idea you can heal at any point on this particular level. So one of the tips on Lemon is to explore this to the full. Get out of there, completely heal and keep on doing that. Level after level, try after try. So this is my first time of the game. I'm now going to try to follow that tip. And here is our first enemy. And we can only attack that if we are adjacent to it, of course, with this warrior. And so let's go in there. There is a skeleton, but he's out of range. So let's move towards that if we've got any turns left. And of course, the turns are marked on the top of that screen. Let's generate a few more turns. That's three. And so let's operate that. And then with our final turn, attack that skeleton. Enemy is dead. So after that, you'll get a scroll telling you what's exactly going on. And then you can roll again and find out some more things by rolling a few more times. And as far as I know, the doors are all unlocked. So you don't have to worry about keys, but you do have to worry about enemies because if you skip a turn, those enemies will walk towards you. And if you're not very lucky, they will swipe us and they will take some damage of our physical strength. And if you're in a long battle, that could take mind strength as well. So let's search again. I found nothing. And you can only search one time before you lose all of your credits. So it's best to walk everywhere and search last. So let's walk all the way up. Found three skeletons. That's not very good. We've got four, three, two, one. And we cannot get out of that. Yes, we can get out of that room. So that means we can search again. Spin, spin, spin that coin. And this, again, is the first time I've played this in a long time. And it's great to feel 
this game under the skin so let's sit back and relax and let's check out this room this is well a crypt it looks like and sometimes you can find special things dotted around crypts and i'm not quite sure whether i can find anything in this particular one because everything in this game is randomized every time you play a level except for the room layouts all the treasures are randomized and all of the enemies as well found a tomb and so we've tomb raided this particular room used before tomb raider actually it was something of existence and back in the day when i first played this on the demo disc i'm not quite sure where it came from but it must have been either amiga power or c omega i got to play a demo of this game and i found it very atmospheric particularly because of the music and the sound effects Sometimes you find a trap and you have to miss a turn and sometimes that's one of the pitfalls or the traps will also deplete our energy as well and so with this scouting run with this one guy that I've happened to take in here at the moment this isn't going to be a great run and this is simply an exploration of the game so this is going to be a long play of me padding around this level and trying to figure out how to play after all these years so this is going to be my exploration run of which we are halfway through at the moment you can see nothing going on yet again in the toolkit so let's just exit that and toolkit well you'll get anything from scratch unless you are the dwarf and then you get a trap disarm of which we shall see later on in this review Let's just speed up that footage again and let's just get through some of the more time consuming sections in this game because once they're dead they're dead and once you've killed them that's them out of the picture and every single screen usually has something on it it could be a trap or a treasure and you can see a portion select a portion portion of speed that will mean that i get double i think movement points so if you have 10 you get 20 so that's fantastic you can see i've picked up 80 gold in the top corner as well and that will come in handy for the shop whenever i choose to exit this level as long as i don't die in the meantime Taking a huge battle against that zombie and you can see the enemies lining up there to kill us if we ended up going in that direction and you can miss and avoid any enemies as long as you don't trigger them and I think skeletons are only triggered as long as you're in the line of sight and sometimes you can run up behind things and maybe that gives you some kind of advantage you survived the attack you survived the attack let's try that again kill the thing and the enemy survived the attack let's roll it again the enemy swiped two more off us and you can see this is a fraught battle let's take on well the speed won't give us any help but we can take on the holy water that gives us some health and yes that is a way to charge up your health during the level so i was wrong there is a way to charge up your health on every single level as long as you find those flasks and i seem to remember those contain up to seven health points and so if you've taken some damage that can really help out when you're in the middle of the level but again those are randomized and sometimes that can only give you one two three four any amount of health back so you never know where they are or how much health it's going to give us so you lose all those items i think once you've exited that level so if you have any health potions dotted around it's best to take them before you've exited that level 
and then you don't lose them, but if you have any gold, you'll take that, and any weapons that you walk in with, you'll also take that out as well. And negotiating those traps means we've only got two strength points left and two brain points left, the same brain I think that we came in with, and with two strength points left and 205 gold, it would be a good time to backtrack now, but look where we are, all the way up the top of that level, so it's going to be a long way back, all the way back, and I'll have to avoid all these enemies, so that's what I'm looking for, do I attack the skeleton or whatever it is in front of us, or do I leg it? And waste all those turns. Let's see what I'm gonna do. Let's roll that dice again, spin the coin. It's now 11 turns, which I think may be the maximum, and we have chosen to bravely leg it away. And if we had the speed at this point, we could then leg it all the way back, if I remember the right way to go, to the beginning of this level. stage it's best to check everywhere but checking all these hidden places for hidden doors hasn't revealed anything and sometimes yes you can find a hidden door somewhere which allows access to a room which you might not even get access to by any other means but in this particular case I'm deciding to foolishly brave it let's see how far we get well I can tell you right now foolishly braving it against these guys isn't the best thing to do And that means that we get to resuscitate that guy and any of the characters will have to be resuscitated from scratch, it's zero gold again and that's one of the cheats if you take any character in, make them fight all of the enemies first of all and then make them stand around. If they die it's no problem because you can simply resuscitate them again on the beginning of the next level and if we take two characters in hopefully one of them will fight all the monsters and the other one will get all the gold so i'm going to take these two guys in here and the other guy reminds me of the robot clockwork thing in return to oz but that's supposed to be a dwarf apparently so let's use that very odd looking dwarf and let's move through the level We've completely exhausted our gold supply, it would be handy if we search for gold in all of these rooms and then we can restock, resupply. And that's another 25 found, and that's for the barbarian, the dwarf hasn't found any. So our plan is gone drastically wrong from the start, we've managed to search with the wrong character. So maybe we should fight everybody with the dwarf from now on, and this would see the opportune time, let's lay into this skeleton, and if we don't he'll grab us, we've got seven strength, and so let's see if we can surround that skeleton. And so another tip in the game is to surround enemies, and that means, well, they can't fight us all at once. And so clicking on the wrong place means I've wasted all my turns, and so we're getting to roll again. Five, hopefully it means we'll take on that bad guy. We have to select him every single time, because there is more than one enemy in certain rooms, and we can only fight one thing at once. So that's that one dealt with, our fighter has got rid of it and Cash Bags is hiding away in the corner. So let's move on and it's another zombie. Zombie, zombie, zombie. Let's get rid of that, let's fight. And we have survived the attack. So you can see at this stage there is action in this game, even though it takes place very slowly on a slow board like this. 
It's supposed to remind us of the board game, which I did have, or at least I did buy, in the, well, early 2000s. I did buy the board game because I would played the demo disc and I enjoyed it so much I went and bought the board game. So that's an instance of the video game making me go out and buy the board game. It was a second-hand model, so unfortunately the creators of the board game did not get any more money, but I played the board game with my ex-wife and we had a great time playing it. And it's one of those things where imagination basically tells you where to go and if you're a good guide you can make a good playable game and by randomizing things and writing things down on paper so that if certain players walk into certain rooms to get certain things it means you can just look that up and say oh you found six gold in there or whatever and that's just the aim of the game is to explore get rid of all the enemies and find all of the gold on all of the levels you can see our fighter is bravely marching all the way through these dungeons of which these are fairly small and again reminiscent of the size of the board game. The floor below your feet falls away, you land heavily, you lose points. Alright then, let's check out trap dismantle. If we operate the trap dismantle we can now fix the floor and that's yet another one of the tools in the game that the dwarf gets for free at the start of every game so you don't have to buy it. The dwarf can dismantle that, and as the warrior has already taken a hit from wandering over that same trap, it would be a good idea to dismantle that from now on. But you can see the warrior, Cash Bags, is now taking hit after hit, and by walking forward like this, sometimes it's not a good idea. Let's see what we can do, and yes, we cannot walk forward because there's someone in the way, and they're out of reach unless we have the elf, I think they have a long range weapon. So you can see the more players you have, the more time it takes you to get around each one, all the way through each maze, but the more invested every player is, you can see with two skeletons, the bad guy is backing off at the moment, and that should mean I can leg it with nine turns, and we can take him on with the dwarf a little bit later. And yet again, it's sometimes easy to run out of turns in this game and the enemy simply has the upper hand and that's, well, at least one strength point removed and he has three brain points, which means he's more intelligent than this dumb barbarian. I have no idea, but surely it's possible to build up brain points by some means. Maybe you have to complete levels and experience in this game probably counts for quite a lot because missing things as we shall see a bit later on in the game and as long as you can miss attacks and defeat attacks then that's what this game really concentrates upon. Have you ever heard the saying you can't cross in hallways and that's the same in this game and sometimes if the enemy is blocking the exit you can't cross but look you can cross straight through if there is no enemy in the way and that's great it means that we can get through use our fighter against this guy and hopefully he can take that punishment but some enemies do take some punishment and unless you can surround them hallways are pretty difficult because you can only take them on one at a time It's a pity that after the introduction music fades away we get a same repetitive jingle or whatever it is that carries on for only a few bars and that can get very repetitive because you're hearing the same four bars or whatever it is repeated 
over and over again. I wish they'd simply repeated that title music and looped that from scratch. And that means that we didn't have to put up with it going da 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 da. It reminds me of so many other boring themes, but we do get some amazingly tremendous music up until that point. See, our warrior doesn't have any money whatsoever. Let's just speed that footage up because we're rapidly getting to that point now where we're running out of strength and my feeble attempts to get some of these guys in and out with some money isn't really leading up to much, but we'll give it up. Eventually, we'll give up the mission and we'll head back towards the start. And the warrior, look at this. He has five hit points and... This guy only has three, he's taking all the punishment, finally the skeleton is dead. And it's great to hear the ah sample, because the Amiga could play samples, it's great that they actually went to the trouble doing that, and it's one of those stock samples that's really great. As you see me getting further and deeper into enemy territory, let's just check out the coder behind this game. He was Michael Hart and he went from MiG-29 Soviet fighter for the Codemasters in 1990 to produce this game and apparently he went on to, I think it says HQ2 1994 on the CD32 Necrocom 1991 and K240 in 1994. Anybody who's played K240 know that that's a similar isometric game and Necrocon, I've never heard of that game and MiG-29 Soviet Fighter, I think that's kind of an afterburner clone so Michael Hart there with this game, it's a great conversion and it's pretty similar to the C64 version See, we're facing pretty big monsters now at this stage, so we might as well be heading back. And the graphics in this game were devised and produced by Jason Wilson, who also converted the graphics for Pac Mania in 1988. And yes, the Chrysalis Gang, whatever they were known as, Peter Harrop and the gang, they did convert Pac Mania, but apparently Jason Wilson converted the graphics from the arcade and also Shadow Warriors he converted those great graphics for Shadow Warriors which I have recorded maybe one of these days it will be released and you might remember Horror Zombies from the Crypt and also Warlock the Avenger Multihead and the CD32 game Diggers Heading back now, I can tell you that the music for this game was coded by Barry Leach. And Barry Leach, if you remember, Lethal Weapon, Lotus 2, Silkworm, Supercars 2, Treasure Trap, Switchblade 2, Pegasus, Impossible. Then you have definitely heard Barry Leach compositions played in your ears. And the soundtracks on the Amiga may not be orchestral but Barry Leach definitely is up there with monumental soundtracks just like those so in this case he created something which was quite epic and definitely the introduction sequence is monumentally epic thanks largely to the graphics but also that music we've got both of the warriors out and the barbarians got 270 let's spend the money what can we have what can we buy 
Maybe a shield is a good idea, because at least then a shield will save us taking hits. And, well, 270 leaves us 170 in the bank. And so, what else can we have? A sword? And maybe, well, we can't afford the broad sword, but we can afford the short sword, whatever benefit that's going to give us. Or maybe we should get, maybe, the hand axe. Now these weapons will do much, but with the crossbow of course we'll have that range and maybe with the spear it can maybe reach a bit longer, I'm not quite sure but the spear, well we're going to pick that up anyway the spear, I don't really think that he's barbarian, I don't really think he's a great spear man to be honest and so it doesn't look like we're going to take the elf or the wizard and wizards can obviously cast spells, maybe over a longer distance, and even room-based spells, and you get to choose those spells before you even enter the game. But for the moment, we're not even bothering with the wizard. We have managed to get two guys out, and we've given them some money, so let's head on back, it looks like, again, to the same level, and yes, you can repeat this ad infinitum, and you can obviously try to get as much out of the game as possible. We have a spear, let's get it on. And we also have armor, a shield. And so hopefully, uh, unfortunately we forgot to heal everybody. We can at this point leave the maze and remember that, but we forgot to heal everybody. So rummaging through a pile of old clothes, we found 20 more coins. So yes, we should be leaving the maze right now and healing everybody. I forgot because I'm not that familiar with this game. And really, I only found out about the healing thing when I was devising all of the markup on this review. So what can we do? We have escaped intact. And so the barbarian is not escaping. We want to find out whether that thing is any good or not. So let's try to run in. Let's face an enemy quickly. Let's see if there's any loot knocking around and maybe a healing potion would come in handy as well and um, let's check that out bottle of healing how much does that give us the fluid revives me how much strength up to seven strength wow so that was well done and so as i say you can keep doing this loading and saving it up until all of your characters are big and strong and so, what have I found? Another healing bottle. Does that increase it? I'm not sure what the top mark is for the strength. I presume it's something like 20 that you can carry around. Maybe it's 100, I've no idea. But if you can get those bottles and keep increasing the strength before you leave, or otherwise you lose them, which I'm about to do, then it means you can have lots and lots of strength and lots and lots of healthy shields and firepower that you can go in and get the game so you can see 40 that's not enough to afford anything in the shop and well the dwarf unfortunately he hasn't got anything either so that's this game and we are about to move on to a new level hopefully it's just to check out all of our pickups let's select the elf for this and for the final time, hopefully the final maze. Oh, the elf, choose your spells. What can we have? Earth of Fire, Fire, Lumi. And what can we do? We can go to the penultimate quest where we're supposed to get that star sword or whatever it's supposed to be. So let's go in with the elf. And we've plenty of elf. So we'll, let's go through and let's see what we can find on this level. And let's see if the, unfortunately, the sword in front of him is now a spear. Let's see if that makes any difference in this game. found a huge monster and that's been towards the end of this game of course you will find huge monsters docking around around the same size of the actual height of the room so if you bravely run away just like this 
then you will be able to bravely fight another day. Got a chaos warrior, let's dispatch that. The enemy is dead. And we found some green imps as well, let's just dispatch that as well. Let's try our oh, magic, let's try a fire wraith on that guy, he's a goblin. And the fire wraps around the goblin, unfortunately goblins are virtually immune to fire, you'll have to try something else. You can see lots of spells are available in the game, but we can't use those right now. See, we're heavily into battle and battling through this game. Sometimes all your warriors can be in battle all at the same time. And so let's try the courage. No, let's try the ball of whatever it said. And it consumes your opponent. There you go. So in that case, the opponent is not immune to that fire. And his body was consumed. But I've just lost one body point because a crossbow bolt has just fired from the wall and penetrated somewhere on my body. Let's use the potion of speed to travel twice as far and that really really wasn't necessary and this is quite good it's one of those games where you don't have to spend all day in there you can just simply wander back and your quest can start and end whenever you want it so for the final time in this review we're gonna check out the sequel the data disc and yes let's just renew all our characters and let's check out that data disc you can see all of the levels there on the original disc from the original game and those are fairly many it will take quite some time to get all the way through those See, the data disc has improved graphics everywhere instead of the walls being green. They're now wall coloured, i.e. blocks of red. And you can see the boulders on the floor are better drawn and even the cracks on the floor as well. You'll see some more enemies as well in the data disc and some more levels as well. So while you look at that, let's just check out the scores for the game. And the lowest score for this game went to Amiga Joker who gave this 63% Acorn Magazine gave Hero Quest 75% Zero gave this 79% Lemon Amiga gave it 80% Amiga Power gave it 80% Co Amiga gave this 81% Ace Magazine gave this 81% Generation 4 gave it 83% Dato gave it 84% Amiga Format gave it 88% Amiga Action gave it 87% and Amiga Computing awarded this 90 the ever reliable The One gave this the highest score at 91% which means the average score out of all that lot is 8 out of 10. I think Hero Quest does have a lot going on for it for those strategy board fanaticists who like Stratego and Archon and all those strategy games where you have to wait patiently for turns to be turned and dice to be rolled and coins to be rolled around. In this case you've got up to maybe 11 moves unless you double that with a potion 
and so for the people that love these types of games, and I definitely fell in love with the demo that I played, even though I didn't get to play this game until fairly recently, I still hold it in a good place in my heart as far as the Amiga version, if not I didn't in fact have the C64 version at one point, but maybe that was also a demo. Hero Quest fans, if you love the board games, then you can't really go wrong. This isn't a write off. Apart from, of course, it has NTC compatible graphics, which means you'll be seeing this in a small window if you try to play this on a PAL system. And maybe with NTSC, it's slightly smoother as well. So, with this compromise, you can see all the skulls in the background. And I'd say it's not a bad game for 1991. And they did again come out with a sequel, Hero Quest 2. So, thank you very much.